Welcome to another Cliss List webinar interview. My guest now is Julian Fox, uh, and I'm pretty excited about this interview. I think Julian is going to give you some very interesting insights into uh, his mindset and uh, his approach and his attitude. And um, you know, I've known Julian for a long time. He's been involved in the community for forever, pretty much. And um, but uh, for those of you listening to this who don't know Julian, Julian, perhaps you can give them a little bit of a uh, introduction to yourself, uh, some of your history, you know, and tell them a little bit about yourself. All right, before I do, I just hope that, that you can stick in like a big applause sound effect, like right before I start talking, just like everyone, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, what, what do you want to know, man? I mean, uh, uh, lead me, lead, lead me to water here. Well, basically, uh, I guess give us a little bit of your history with women. Did you start off as a, a natural and you always had women around you or was it just something that you right, struggled I, with? I'm going to go know? back. I'm going to go way back. I'm going to go way back. All right. I was in fourth grade. This is like nine-year-old Julian and Chrissy Santos was sitting on the heater and I was talking to her and she made some weird, bizarre joke. I don't remember the exact joke. She was like eight. So the joke probably sucked, but it was about chocolate milk coming out of her nipples. And that moment, I was like, damn, I like girls. And it never, and from there, it just built. It built into, uh, I hate to say it, but a lifelong obsession. I mean, I, I turned it into a, you know, a million dollar company eventually because I was like, man, I, I love girls so much. I loved the process, the science uh, behind, you know, attraction itself. And, and, and the, simply the discovery, the big discovery that I made, in, I guess, my early, early 20s is that this is something you can get better at. It's not just like, I think a lot of guys think that it's sort of this innate thing. You either got it or you don't. You're either good looking or you're not, or you got game or you don't. But the big discovery I made when I was probably 22 or 23, I'm in my early 40s now, but uh, the big discovery I made was that, no, this is something that you can improve upon and get better and better and better at. And uh, I've, I've devoted uh, most of my adult life to, to bettering myself in that arena. Tell us about the first experiences uh, of you know learning that you could learn something about this and improve your skills on it. Tell tell us a little bit about that. I, you know I so uh, all right I guess in high school you know I was paralyzed around girls and girls liked me. I was actually a pretty good looking kid, uh, but but I, I didn't know how to handle it. I mean if they liked me at first after I opened my mouth for two minutes they stopped liking me. And then I got to college and luckily for me, I went to, I got kicked out of high school. Actually, it's a long story. It involved a, an undercover drug bust and uh, several felonies. But uh, eventually I got into a, the one kind of school, the one sort of college that would accept me, which was a music conservatory. I was actually a singer, super gay, but um, I, I was at this conservatory, which was an amazing thing because it was almost all girls. It was, I would say, 75% female, and most of the guys that were there were gay. I was literally the only straight guy in my graduating class. So in college, girls didn't really have a lot of options. I mean, I literally had girls show up at my front door on more than one occasion saying, you know, Julian, we don't have a lot of options, so let's fuck. And I'm like, great. And, you know, from there, sort of this, a little bit of kind of confidence began to build re really because of the circumstances, nothing to do with, you know, my, my game, but because my confidence, because of this strange situation I was in with these desperate girls, my confidence began to grow. And when I moved to New York to pursue uh, performance arts, uh, I was in a bookstore one day. This had to be, I'm going to say this was, geez, man, this must've been 2004, something like that. I was in a bookstore and I picked up a book called The Lay Guide. And that was one of the, the earlier sort of seduction uh, books that uh, written. And it was awesome. And it had, you know, all these techniques and it had some, you know, routines in it and it had some patterns in it. And, uh, and I was like, wow, man, there's like people studying this stuff. So from there, I ended up uh, going to the New York City Lair. Within a month, I was teaching uh, improv for pickup artist workshops there. I was the first guy ever to do a, a workshop that was drill based, where we were actually doing kind of ad libbed scenarios at, to teach uh, techniques, seduction or attraction techniques. And from there, it just became, like I said, an obsession, a, a passion, uh, a passion that I've, I've been following my, my, uh, my entire career. 
And um, uh, okay, but uh, tell us a little bit about some of your experiences uh, as you uh, went from uh, not having success to having success, not and, and stuff that you started to get control over, rather than you know women just throwing throwing themselves at you. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's it's a it's a great question. I mean, it's it's a bit of a, you know I have to really kind of consider it for a moment, but I would say. Because yes, because I am, you know, they have they have guys that are quote unquote naturals, right? That were like always good. I was definitely not a natural, um, but people think of me as a natural now. But I wasn't, which I guess by definition means that I'm not a natural. I I, I figured it out. I cracked the code. And so how did I crack the code? What what were some of these kind of experiences that um, that helped me to do it? Well, I, I, I I'm gonna make a few observations. One observation is as I've gotten older and as I've gained more and more experience with women and slept with more women and dated more women and been rejected more, um, one of the interesting phenomenons that's occurred is over time I've cared less and less. Like over the years, if I think about myself in high school talking to a girl, I cared so much about what she thought and so much about how I performed and it created all of this anxiety in me. Nowadays, I don't give a fuck, Cliff. You don't have any idea how little I care. Like even, it, it almost is in some ways at this stage, <laughs> a little bit of like a gift and a curse because, you know, on, on one hand, I'm, I think I'm very effective because of how little I care. On the other hand, you know, I'm a little bit of dead inside. I'm kind of like a robot, like the Terminator over here. But, you know, I get a lot of pussy. Well, what do you think, uh, uh, you know, like we, we hear a lot of that talk about not not caring at all and, and uh, how that can be a key to having success with women. But uh, I think that there's always, you know, uh, an issue of how to accomplish that. You know, uh, how, you know, I don't know if it just sort of came out of nowhere with you, but how did it how did it happen? How did that trigger? Well, I, I can I can tell you something that we used to do in my workshops when I when I used to teach workshops back in the day, I would say what what separated my workshop from probably a lot of the other workshops out there was mine, re besides the fact that my workshops were, were heavily drill based, and we would still went out in field, as they call it, you know, out to nightclubs at night, and, you know, I'd have to demo, and, you know, the pressure was on, and it was exciting and, and, uh, and fun, but in the workshops during the actual daytime, what we did was I would bring in, like, three or four really hot girls like this was in New York City and I knew some models and I knew some actresses and I and and they they would come in and and basically run drills with guys and a huge percentage of our exercises over a three-day period were really focused on variations of one thing and that is rejection dealing with rejection we I, I called one of the exercises rejection desensitization so for example you know, I'd have a guy in the workshop and I'd be like, all right, go up there. You're, you're at a nightclub and Gina, you know, go approach Gina. And then in front of the, the class, you know, he would walk up to her and, you know, use a line or something like that. And then based on whatever signal I kind of gave to her, she would either uh, reciprocate, you know, she would start talking to him, she'd engage or she'd reject him. And depending on the signal, she could reject him quite brutally. You know, oh, you're way too short for me, honey. Something like that. And we would do that over and over again. And right after the rejection, it's not like I would just, you know, smash these guys' hopes and dreams in the class. I'd ask a question. I'd say, all right, you know, Timmy, give me a, a neutral interpretation of what she just said. And he'd have to say, oh, well, you know, maybe, you know, maybe she's got a boyfriend or something like that. Now, now give me a positive interpretation. Go, Jimmy. And he'd say, oh, well, she's just saying she's trying to neg me right now. She actually loves short guys. And I'm going to keep, keep uh, plowing forward here. So in other words, a lot of the, the focus in our workshops uh, was, was how to – reinterpret and reframe rejection in a way that gets rid of the anxiety, gets rid of approach anxiety, and just helps you to, to, to uh, come to terms with it. Like for me, I'm just going to say it. I'm fucking nasty with women and not nasty in a bad way, like nasty like in the slang sense where I'm, I'm really skilled. But let me tell you this, despite – I mean, I've seen all the guys. I've seen all the famous pickup artists, as they call them. And you know, I'll smush those guys in a nightclub or wherever, I, I think. But the point is, 
I get, I'm not bragging. What I'm saying is, is I have gotten rejected in my life uh, uh, 10,000 times. I've been rejected. And, and to this day, I still get rejected. The very best guys, the best looking guys, the smartest guys, the richest guys all deal with rejection. So any, any man that can say, all right, rejection is just part of this. How can I get more comfortable with it? How can I start to interpret it in a positive way? How can I not let it hinder me, right? That guy's going to have a huge advantage because that guy's not going to be paralyzed by fear of rejection and he's going to keep going. And I think that's really, for me, one of the things that differentiates me in terms of my, my success with women is I'm just more comfortable with getting rejected. So I don't, I, I'm not frozen by it. How, how did that come about? Do you think is it just a matter of, you know, repeated uh, desensitization? I, I mean, in my particular case, uh, I think it, it was just because I, I sort of chose this as my career. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I can't even say that seriously, but as because I chose this as my career, as as what you know, my vocation, you know, I got a tremendous amount. That combined with the fact that I do genuinely love women, I love sexual variety, so I'm constantly kind of on the prowl. And the fact that this has become my career, I've gotten an extraordinary amount of experience. And with that experience, with whatever you know, the the successes I've had, there have been many, many failures. As well, so because I've had so many failures, I've had more time to reflect and say, "All right, here's another failure. How can I interpret this in a way that's at the very least neutral?" Because most guys, when they get rejected, they interpret it in a negative way. They say, oh, "I'm just too ugly," or "I'm, you know, I'm, I just suck. Girls hate me," and it fucks them up for the next time. Like they get in their own heads, and even if a girl's actually actually is interested in them, they'll they'll shoot themselves in the foot. You know, they'll. They'll behave in a way that's, I know this sounds generic, but they'll behave in, in an unconfident way. They'll behave in an unattractive way because previous rejections have fucked them all up. So for me, if I could give any advice to a guy, it would be like make fucking friends with rejection. When you get rejected, that is a golden opportunity for you to not get in your own head, interpret it in a, in a positive way and say, all right, how... How can I practice? This is a chance to practice. This girl just brutally rejected me. This is a beautiful, incredible opportunity for me to practice not letting it bother me or maybe not letting it bother me for that long. Instead of it, you know, fucking up my whole week, maybe it just screws up, you know, the next 20 minutes and I'm on to the next, right? It's such a, a crucial skill that a lot of guys sort of tend to ignore. Well, I think a lot of guys are going to you know, like especially in the beginning when they're they're not really used to this, they're going to get a little bit, uh, you know, deer in the headlights when when woman rejects them hard for sure. Um, well, get them, get those deer in the headlights. Look at those headlights. Let that car come. Let it crush you. And 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 just and say, hey, this is a beautiful opportunity because right, for one, another example, back when I did the workshop days. We would go out to it when we went in field. So we would do these drills, you know, with these girls all day. And then we went in field and I would play a game and the game was this. All right, guys, since we all know rejection is a part of the game, we're going to play a game right now. We're all going to approach. We're all going to approach one by one and we're going to watch the other guy approach from a distance. And whoever gets, you know, if you don't get a phone number or a kiss or anything like that, you know, uh, and you get rejected, like she kind of, you know, turns her back on you. That's one point. You've earned one rejection point. Whoever has the fewest points by the end of the night has to pay for all the drinks. So <laughs> I, I, no, no, truly, and we would do this every time we went out. So I would incentivize the guys to actually fail. Not, not, not they weren't failing on purpose, right? Because that would sort of defeat the 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 real purpose, which is to get laid, right? But it, but we just we established that rejection was a part of it, and whoever got the least rejections ended up paying for the tricks. And it was such a great way to sort of take the pressure off the guys. Like there's little hacks that you can do that will help like psychological hacks to kind of help, help, help it not be so painful, you know? Well, what, uh, you know, other than just sort of getting used to being rejected, what, um, what have you learned in terms of, uh, avoiding getting the rejection? Oh, that's a good question. Um, boy, I mean, there's so many, so many things. Well, that's a loaded question, Cliff. You really well, tripped like me for, up. For example, you know, if you, you were going out with your guys and they would all, 
you know, I'm sure in, in the beginning they would do certain things and, uh, and that wouldn't work. And, you know, what, what sort of things did you find change their, some of their luck a little bit? Or well, all right. There's, uh, we can dive into some specific techniques, you know, uh, in a second. But I, I do want not, to, not to kind of harp on this rejection thing, but I do think it's so important. Uh, let me just make one point about it that, that will sort of uh, round, in a roundabout way answer your question. If a guy goes out and doesn't fear rejection versus another guy who goes out and fears rejection, let's say they're twin brothers, okay? Let's say it's the same guy, okay? It's the same guy, night one, he fears rejection, night two, he doesn't fear rejection. His behavior on night two when he doesn't fear rejection is going to be completely different. He's going to stand differently. He's going to look at her differently. He's going to talk differently. He's going to respond differently. There are so many incredible behavioral changes that occur when you're not anxious or fearful. And if you don't fear rejection or you don't fear it that much, right? Like it doesn't paralyze you, as I said, then you're going <laughs> to, you're going to be a lot more effective. So that's just my, my final point about rejection, embrace it, love it, make love to it, see it as an opportunity uh, to grow, know that no matter how good you get or how rich you get or how much plastic surgery you get, you're still gonna deal with rejection. So now I'll pivot over to some other things that guys might be able to do um, that will help reduce, <laughs> reduce uh, the probability of rejection. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's let's talk environments. Let's pick an environment. Okay. Pick one. Pick one. Clip. Well, uh, let's start with night game because I think that uh, that's uh, where guys do most of their approaching. I think. I think there's day game and then there's online game in general. But uh, let's let's start with the night game. Well, <laughs> actually, before we get in, before I get into night game, can I just share a little something, something with you? Sure. Let me tell you, right now, just for the record, right now I'm, I'm kind of going through a, uh, a personal challenge. I mentioned earlier that I've been incredibly obsessed with women really since I was in my late teens. And, um, and at this point, you know, I, I'm, I'm at sort of a different stage in my life where I'm trying to see, all right, well, what am I, Julian, capable of doing if, you know, I, don't, I, I didn't put so much energy into – you know, sleeping with women or my last relationship, which I actually just came out of, this was kind of a cool, cool milestone. Uh, but I, I was in a three way relationship, uh, with two, with a 19 year old and a, no, a, a 20 year old and a 22 year old, um, super, super smoking hot chicks, ate each other's pussies, like love to fuck each other. Like they were like legit bisexual and it was fucking awesome. I mean, I've had threesomes before, but I've never been lived with two women and been in a relationship. So for me, like I felt like I discovered, you know, the Holy grail or something. Cause what I found is sort of the next level of my obsession, which is I've slept with so many women. I, I don't know how many women I've slept with, but I, it's somewhere between probably 500 and 800 or something like that to the point where it's like fucking boring for me now, unless it's like a super, super hot chick. Like I just like, it's, it's just another day at the office. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it's like an addiction that I just need to satisfy. But what I've discovered is the next level of my addiction is watching two women make love and having threesomes with those women. And not only that, but watching love blossom, like to watch love blossom between two women that you're, you're living with and that you're involved with romantically. It's just so fascinating. I feel like I'm 14 again, like in my first relationship. So I just had to kind of mention that it's, it's the coolest thing ever. And, and there's a reason I mentioned it, which is I, well, Bill Grant actually made this discovery, but, and, and kind of shared it with me, but I made, I'm going to say I, cause I like to talk about me in the Royal sense, but, um, Bill Grant sort of revealed, he, he, Bill, Bill Grant is an older guy. I've learned a lot of cool tricks from him. And, uh, I think he's in his late fifties now, something like that, almost 60. And uh, he's got a completely different game. He doesn't go out to nightclubs. He doesn't go out and run day game. He doesn't do anything. All he does 
is smash chicks on sugar sites, but he never pays them. He doesn't like have sugar babies that he pays or that he compensates or anything. He basically like gets these girls to like him and then convinces them to sort of let, let him test drive <laughs> the girl before like, you know, he ever, uh, spoils them and then he never ends up spoiling them at all he just he just gets them to like him and then he either gets involved with him or he moves on to the next girl so basically i've kind of adopted his method um it's it's a it's a cheat it's a massive it's the biggest as a guy who's been in the seduction game since whatever 2004 let me say i've tried it all i made my first product that i ever made or my second product I ever made was stripper shark i i spent three years exclusively dating strippers i made uh an opening uh, openers product i made a reg a day game product i made all kinds of products right an inner game product you name it the the mechanism of sort of exploiting the girls that you meet on sugar sites is by far the best sort of cheat the best hack the best mechanism that I have ever found to get laid. It's basically like in business, there's a concept called ROI, return on investment. It, it, the sugar sites is it's the least energy put in and the most sex that comes out compared to anything else, strippers, day game, night game, club game, you name it. And so I learned that from Bill Grant and that's over the last five years. That's almost exclusively what I've been doing. Do I still meet girls on Tinder? Do I still meet girls, you know, when I go out? Sometimes, yes, of course. But the, the bulk of the girls I have met, and it's been hundreds over the last five years, have been from these sugar sites. I have paid none of them. Well, maybe one or two because I was like real horny that night. But basically none of them. And the, my last relationship was with, as I said, these, these two lovely young women. And I met them both on a popular sugar site. I ran sort of the game that, that Bill Grant and I uh, sort of developed together on them, which was basically a, a pitch. You kind of pitch them, you run them through this series of steps, and then you kind of pitch them as to like meeting up with you and uh, without having to compensate them. And then I got them both to like me. Next thing you know, I, I was dating each of them individually. And then one day, I pulled a merger, Cliff. I straight up merged them. I knew I knew Cat was at my house in San Diego. Cat was at my place. You know, she was staying, you know, staying over a lot. And I was on a date with Brianna. And I'm I'm having drinks with Brianna. I had already kind of told the girls about each other. I had I had found out just that they were both, you know, interested in girls. They were both bisexual. And then I literally just pulled Brianna back to my house, didn't warn Cat. Brianna knew, but did not warn Kat at all. And I walked in and I said, surprise. And Kat looked at me with like daggers in her eyes. Like she was so pissed that I just showed up with this girl. And, but luckily I, I was dealing with some other like personal issue. I'm like, girls, I've had a really rough day. I really need a drink. Um, would you girls like to have a drink with me? And they were both, yes, please. Next thing you know, we're having drinks. We're out to dinner. And within a month or two, we, we were all living together. And that came out of the sugar, exploiting the sugar sites kind of a mechanism. I don't know if I could have done that if I had like met a girl at a nightclub. Like I was able to kind of, th these are the kinds of miracles, sexual miracles you can pull off with that mechanism. So when you asked me before, this is a very long answer to a sh very short question. But when you asked me before, hey, you know, night game, you know, what are you, what are you doing that's working? This is what I'm doing that's working. Now, if you're, a, you know, an 18-year-old guy, uh, is, is the sugar site thing going to work for you? It actually might, believe it or not. But basically, the coolest thing is the older you are, if you're in your 40s, 50s, even if you're in your 60s, hell, I know guys in their 70s that are on that site that have had success. Uh, it, is, it is a way that you can sleep with younger women uh, for the rest of your life. Well, I, I actually had a little uh, uh, education about this, so I I'm definitely want to ask you some questions about the, the sugar sites. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there was somebody that I knew who was, like, really into it. And, um, you know, he has had a lot of success with the women from there. But, uh, you know, for the most part, I found that he, you know, when I, when I kind of hung around with him and watched what he was doing, he was mostly just lying to these girls. And that was uh, – that was not something that I, you know, really support. I, I, I what was he? What, what was he lying about? You know. Well, he he. First off, he would um, he would kind of um, uh, make himself out to be, you know, a big shot to, to start with, and uh, yeah. 
hint that, uh, you know, there's all kinds of, you know, things going on and this type of stuff. And, um, but, uh, you know, he, but the he, thing was, he was pretending that he had money, but he didn't. More or less, you know, but the thing is that, you know, uh, it's a little bit of a story, but uh, he, he stayed at my place for a little while uh, when, when he was in town here because he's not from uh, from my, my city. And um, he did meet uh, several women off the site. In fact, uh, while he was here, that was he, those were the only women that he actually uh, had any uh, intimate relationships with. Um, but frankly, uh, you know, they, they were all uh, there, you know, with the idea of money being paid at some point or another. And in fact, one of them uh, got really mad, even though, uh, you know, he claimed that he never promised her anything. And, uh, and but meanwhile, she got upset. She started threatening, you know, she was like 18 years old. Mm. Um, she started threatening him that she, she, he's messed with the wrong person. Anyway, long story short, he ended up paying her $500 just to, to not uh, call her friends and, and have him taken care of basically. Uh, Jesus. Yeah, I mean it was pretty nasty, and um, uh, you know I, I'm I would say because knowing how much experience he claimed to have had with these sugar sites, that that's probably not the first time that's happened to him. Um, well, well, he's he's doing it wrong. If if he's if he's encountering situations like that, he's doing it wrong. Like there's a way to do it, and, and Bill Grant really talks about this in depth. But there's a way to do it where you're actually very transparent. You know, I mean, I mean, if you're if you're like totally broke, you know, living in your mom's garage, you're not going to advertise that fact, obviously. But you do have to be very transparent uh, in the sense, like, I, I, if I'll describe sort of how I approach it, um, I kind of ride the fence a little. But the way I approach it on these sites is, you know, I, I'm, a girl will message me because the beautiful thing about these sites compared to say Tinder or anything else like that, or you know, matchmaking sites is. The sugar sites, for whatever reason, I guess for obvious reasons, they have a they have about a seven to one or an eight to one female to male ratio. So where on Tinder there's probably five guys for every girl, on the sugar sites there's eight girls or nine girls even for every guy. So because of that, you're going to get a lot more engagement. You're going to get a lot more girls messaging you, a lot more options. And as these girls are messaging you, or one one messages me, basically what I do in a nutshell is. A message back and forth, you know, sort of trying to build a little rapport, and then what do you say in the in the beginnings? Because uh, I I actually was fiddled yeah. with this uh, with him uh, when he was around, and uh, you know I just I could never quite figure out exactly what it was that was working because uh, even you know like the, the only thing that seemed to be working is these women were like absolutely dead set on on getting allowances and and uh, you know uh, they they were not interested in wasting their time you know like yeah. uh, you know. They they were pretty pretty uh, direct and adamant about this for the most part. Was was he? All right, let me ask you a question, and then I'll tell you what I do. Right. So, because the the artistry of, of of what I've done, and certainly what Bill Grant has has uh, spearheaded on these sugar sites, is is how to bypass that. Right. Um, first off, there's different categories of girls on the sugar sites. Right. Uh, there's there's the noobs, and then there's the pros, and then there's the girls that are in between. In general, avoid the pros. The pros are going to be the ones who are like, "Hey, this is what I want for an allowance. This is what I want. You know, pay per meet, whatever." They're very direct. They're very kind of business like. They can they can be smashed too. Trust me, I've done it many times. But what specifically, I look for the girls that are that are kind of new to the site. A friend signed them up. They were curious. They they want to kind of you know date an older guy or they want to date a guy that you know is has got his shit together. I look for girls like that. There's a lot of girls on that site. Uh, that I would say about a third to a quarter of the girls on that site, they're just, you know, they've been dating younger guys that have treated them like shit and, you know, work at IHOP and 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 they want to date a, an older guy that just has his shit together and isn't going to be abusive to them and is going to, you know, give them wisdom and so forth. So there, there's a contingent of girls on all those sugar sites that are like that. Those are the ones that I look for. And, and one way you can locate them is very easily to just run a search on newer members, right? The newer members are typically going to uh, not be pros yet, right? So that's that's one piece. But but I'm curious. I have a question for you about your friend. What was he doing? Do you know? I'm not sure if you know. What was he doing to sort of bypass uh, bypass the girls that were like, I want an allowance. What was his technique? I 
you know, I don't really remember. I mean, uh, I know that I fiddled with it a little bit and I tried being uh, very direct with the, these women and saying that, you know, look, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not looking to, uh, to hire a woman to, to, to be involved with me, you know, and like, you know, uh, and it just, just did not work. I mean, uh, they yeah. were, they were just adamant that, uh, you know, that the the reason they're on that site is for uh, you know they're seeking arrangement and that the arrangement is pay is payment. Right. Okay. So let let's let's talk about this for a minute, Cliff, because I think there's some some cool tricks I can show you. So forget about your listeners for a second. I'm about to get you laid, Cliff. A lot. <laughs> you know, your penis is going to thank me. All right. So what? Let me just tell you what I do. And I again, I have to give a lot of credit here to Bill Grant. Uh, he he really developed a lot of these these techniques. I, I've added on to some of them and improved a couple of them, but, but he's the man with that. He actually has a product that, an amazing product that, uh, that teaches guys really how to do this uh, and how to do it in a way that, that really isn't based on, on deception. Um, it's very clever, but, but I'll sort of describe what that method is kind of just roughly. And the way it works is, okay, so I, a, a girl messages me. Now you asked before, well, what do I say? The cool thing about these sites is it's, because you're getting so many girls messaging you, you're the prize. The guys on these sites are the prizes. Where on like Tinder or at a nightclub, the girl is typically the prize. You've got to kind of do all these tricks to try and reframe that, rebalance the status. But on the sugar sites, you're the prize because girls assume that you're successful, right? And, there's a, and also, there's a lot more girls than guys, which automatically kind of puts you in that prize frame. So when a girl messages me, typically she's the one, from my perspective, trying to win me over. I got so many options on this site. So do I have, if it's a really hot girl, what I'll do is I'll look at her profile and I'll look, for, I'll associate off something, you know, I'll try to think of something funny or I'll try to think of some, something cool based on, you know, her written profile or based on something in her picture. Like the best, the best sort of openers online are obviously always kind of improvised to you know towards something that's on her profile but either way what i'm saying is because you have the higher status uh on, on the sugar sites you, you your game doesn't actually have to be as sharp so a girl messages me okay we, we have a few messages back and forth you know i i, I have tons of these messages saved but I'll, i'm gonna sort of like ad lib make one up right now but a girl's like you know oh you know hey what, what do you uh uh, what are you looking for on this site? Or she says, "Hey, what's up?" You know, and I say, "Hey, what's up with you?" It's very simple. I keep it. I keep it simple. Keep it light, and uh, as quickly as possible, I will try and transition her off of the site to text messaging. So I'm like, "Oh, hey, you know, I don't check the site that often, um, but text me," and then she'll text me, and we start texting back and forth. The little text game actions going on there, right? We can go more into that in a moment some messages back and forth and then the next the, the thing that I'm pushing for in the in sort of the totem pole of, of events here is I'm pushing to get her on a video chat call why because I like to skip the whole first like my goal is to get this girl to come straight to my house or straight to wherever I'm staying without having to like go out for like a night on the town first I'm trying to skip the first date and actually have the first date over video chat so I go from the site to text message. From text message, I try to basically schedule a FaceTime call. I'm like, hey, you know, we should FaceTime. And I'll have I have some sort of line that I say, which is like, you know, you know, so you can make sure I'm not, you know, some, you know, 300 pound, you know, Nigerian ditch digger. Not that there's anything wrong with Nigerian ditch diggers for Cliff's listeners, you know, and and, um, and and vice versa. I'll say, and then maybe. 50% or 40% of the time I'm able to get them onto a FaceTime call and then the other girls drop off. There's, there's attrition at every step, but that's part of just, this is part of the game. Then I get her on a FaceTime call. Now, a lot of the girls, okay, at this point, because not that much rapport has been built yet, right? So a lot of the girls um, will, will at some point during the early part of the call or even in the text messages before that, a lot of the girls will say like, well, what kind of arrangement are you looking for? If they'll try to corner me into like agreeing to sort of be their sugar daddy and like buy them presents and shit and give them a, an allowance. And what I do is I just kind of deflect. Like I just don't even really address it. I'm like, yeah, well, we can talk about that. 
But first, I want to know more about you. Like, you know, I'm curious about you. You know, what uh, what's your big dream in life? What's what's your goal? You know, why aren't you in a relationship? Why did you get on that site? You know, what's wrong with you? Something wrong with you? You know, so you know, I, in other words, I just deflect and I don't answer that question. Why? Because what I'm trying to do, and it's much easier on on FaceTime call. Um, and by the way, before I tell you what I do, I'll just say this: the reason that you do the FaceTime call is because. You, the person can see you. They can see you're the guy in the pictures, right? And you can, they can see your energy. They can see your vibe. They can see how you move. They can see how you act. And you can see how they act. And you can see that if you like them as well. So it kind of makes them a lot more at ease to meeting up with you because they know you're not like, you know, a, a catfish, as they say. Um, but anyway, now I'm on the call with the girl. I'm deflecting if she brings up anything about the arrangement. And I'm going right back. Every time I deflect, I just go back to rapport building, man. Simple, simple rapport building. Like finding out who she is, finding out what her dreams are, what her hopes are, you know, telling, sharing things about me, disclosing things about me, I'm trying to make her giggle, trying to make her smile, you know, basically becoming friends with her, right? I'm not like overly sexual. A lot of my game now, it's basically like, it sounds weird, but it's like cool friendship game mixed with flirtation. I'm like just that cool fucking friend, but I mix in, you know, some innuendo. I mix in some flirtation on top of the friendship thing. And that's what I'm doing on the call with these girls every single time. And if she brings up the arrangement, I deflect, go back to rapport building, back to be her fucking buddy, find out who she is, friendship game, plus flirtation here and there mixed in. And I just keep doing that until I feel like, all right, we're fucking friends now. A certain amount of rapport has been established. And once I feel like I've accomplished that, which takes anywhere from 10 minutes to 40 minutes, right, on, on a call, I would say 20 to 30 is the average. Once, once I do that, I do what Bill Grant calls, I, I drop the bomb. Okay, I drop the bomb and I basically say, okay, okay. So remember, this is right after the rapport has been, you know, been, been solidified, and maybe even after I've made her giggle or made her smile or anything like that. I drop the bomb and I say, you know, hey, Jenna, I, I, I have to tell you, listen, before you start liking me too much, there's something I got to tell you here. Um, I'm really not looking for something artificial. You know, I'm looking for something organic. You know, I'm, I'm a fairly successful guy. Um, I have a lot of cool experiences, a lot of, you know, cool things to share. Um, but I'm not looking for something that doesn't feel real. You know, I, I want, I, I, I'm happy to like, if we start hanging out and we dig each other in person, like I am so happy to do nice things for you and do cool things together and take you on adventures. But it's got to be my idea. You know, I don't want that to ever be an expectation because I'm I'm really looking for something that's organic. So and that's it. That's the bomb. That's the key, the key sort of speech. And, and actually, Bill Grant has it has a, a written version in his product, um, Ageless. Is a written version that's that's far more eloquent than what I just ad lib. It's it's quite beautiful. And the key to dropping that speech is the timing. You have to build rapport first. And I know he has a bunch of techniques for that. But if you know you build rapport first. And then you time it and then you drop that bomb. And if you do it right, if you do it even reasonably well, then she will agree to hang out with you that night, most likely, and she won't have any expectations. She'll be like, all right, I'm cool with that. Because there's still a bit of a carrot there. It's still like, all right, you know, maybe this guy's gonna take me on vacation at some point. Maybe he's got some great wisdom to share with me. You know, and he's cool. I feel like we're like friends. Like he's not gonna rape me. Awesome. Um, sure, I'll come over. And by that point, if you've done it right, you've also had your first date. You not only have you established that you're not going to pay her, but you've also had your first date and she's going to be a lot more comfortable just coming straight over to your house or meeting at the bar around the corner from your house. And that, Cliff, is what I have been doing repeatedly for the last five years straight. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, you've obviously, you know, refined it to a, to a science at this point, I gather, after five years, you know. Um, I'm like Einstein with this shit. <laughs> uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit, some, some of the subtleties that maybe, uh, you know, wouldn't be necessarily obvious. Uh, of, of the sugar game? Yeah. Mm. Well, there's a lot of little subtleties. I mean, there's lots of little 
tricks and tips and I mean there's there's a lot of elements to it for example like having a fucking killer profile um, you know I, I like to think you know a lot of guys they'll they'll put up pictures of sort of you know them looking the best right um, for me what I like to do is I like to put up I don't think of the pictures so much individually let's say I'm gonna put up five pictures I, I think of the pictures uh, working in com excuse me in combination with each other so like instead of an individual picture where I look good here I look good here I look good here I think I want to paint a picture of my life with those five photos so maybe one there's contrast between them I'm showing sort of who I am so maybe one picture is you know uh, me uh, giving a talk somewhere which you know has a lot of social proof in it not everybody can do that because not, not everybody gives talks but whatever what you know maybe you dressed up in a suit looking sharp you know you know after work uh, another picture I don't own a boat but maybe another picture of, of me is me on a boat and you know I'm not saying I own that boat but uh, it looks fucking cool right so the, I got me on a boat I've got me you know giving a talk or wearing a suit uh, I've got me uh, playing, uh, you know, playing with my my nephews or something, right? Something, something that's kind of uh, got a little bit of the paternal aspect going. I've got me with uh, friends, okay, out like partying, clinking glasses, showing the life of the party kind of vibe, right? So we're we're kind of painting a picture. These showing different dimensions uh, of 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 your life, right? And if you can do that with your photos, you're already ten steps ahead of the game. So that would be like a, a subtlety, I guess. Okay. Uh, I got more, Cliff. I got more. Let me hear. <laughs> I'm I'm all ears. <laughs> all right. So that that's one idea. So so another another you know more complicated uh, piece is you know what do you do for the profile, the written part of the profile. Um, you know, for me I, I, as a writer, I mean, I I really take a lot of joy. Um, in, in writing profiles, I've written profiles for clients before. I, I wrote a I wrote a profile for I had a client once, and I did this pro bono. I had a client; he had some sort of degenerative disease where he was basically stuck in a wheelchair, and uh, you know he he didn't really have control over his body, but he was very bright. Uh, you know, he spoke with sort of a you know a delayed slur. The, the guy was at a massive disadvantage. So you know, I actually spent many hours kind of working with him and trying out different things and I even wrote him I wrote him a profile I'm tempted to pull it up but uh, I wrote him a profile you know for the sugar sites and he actually got his first blow the guy's like 25 he got his first blow job ever from a girl that he he uh, he met on the site now, I'm not gonna tell you what arrangement he struck with her because it'll take all the fun out of it but but uh, but yeah, so my, my point just is is the, the writing of the profile aspect is a whole nother piece. Now, if you're not a writer, right, then there's other little tricks you can do, which is, you know, you, Cliff, you might, not, you might not like this, but and I'm not recommending this per se, but hell, but Google like best online dating profiles and look and see what pops up and rip pieces from different ones you know rip one from a you know a couple lines from this one a couple lines from that one add in a couple lines about yourself and use that like you know ain't no shame okay uh, interesting um, or, I, I or guess the hire me or hire me to write one for you for ten thousand dollars <laughs> The uh, you know I've I've just sort of in my experience has been that uh, it's very hard to figure out what works on these profiles uh, you know unless unless you sort of stumbled onto the right uh, formula you know I think guys have a lot of trouble figuring out what is it that works and what doesn't work you know in general. Well, all right. So let me let me respond to what you said, which is you know well there's a couple things you could do. For one, you could and this is you know. It's a little gay here, but you could make a woman's profile on one of these sites that you're on, and you can peruse the guy's profiles. I've done that many times because I want to see I want to see who, who the competition is. I want to see, and a lot of the times you can tell by how you know uh, pop. You can tell how popular a particular profile is by you know is it kind of being shown in the general display area, and you can look and study the profiles that are better, and you can model aspects of your profile. Uh, after theirs. 
Okay. Um, you know, the thing is, the thing is, in general, like just because you're looking at some other guys' profiles, you, you, I, I think that in, in general, most guys are going to say, well, I, I, I can't really, t even though some of them may look really good, I can't really tell which ones are actually getting the response. All right. Well, well, fine. So fair, fair point. That that depends on the dating site that you're on. On some da dating sites, you cannot tell. On some dating sites, you can tell. But let's assume, for the sake of argument, that they're on a dating site that you can't tell. Well, what's your next move besides hiring Julian Fox? Your next move is very simple. Your next move is you split test one element of your profile at a time. Typically, you'd start with the picture, your main profile picture. Let it run for a week, you know, and kind of count how many messages you got. Then try a different picture and let that one run for a week and count how many messages you got there. Do it, be scientific about it. Test different elements and then say, all right, I've, I wrote this one profile. I don't know how it's good, but this week I got, you know, nine messages with this profile. But I now write a new profile and for the next week or the next two weeks. Uh, test the, the new profile and just measure engagement. Split test, split test your, your profile. They do this in marketing as well. Your profile should be something that's always being optimized. It's always being not, not arbitrarily improved, but you're testing different elements of it and keeping general track. And you'll notice if you write something that's way better or the people res girls respond better to it, you'll, you'll notice an improvement. And then that becomes your new control, as they say. Interesting. Um, yeah, no, uh, I guess that, uh, you know, that, that is, it does though in a lot of ways start feel like starting from scratch rather than, you know, picking up off uh, somebody else's experience and just sort of using, uh, you know, you know, the sort of the, the way to, the sort of hiring Julian Fox to write your profile type thing where someone who has already got all the experience and knows what's going to work and what isn't is, is certainly a, saving a lot more time than having to split test everything. Do you guys, do you, you want to hear a couple profiles I've written? Go for it. All right, let's see here. All right, here's, I'll read, I'll read a couple here, but uh, I'll, I'll start off with my, my most recent one, which was uh, Kat and I, you know, I told you we were in a three-way relationship, but we ended up breaking up with Brianna, you know, whatever, however many months after. And, um, and I was like, well, why don't we get on the, the sugar sites but as, as a couple, as you and me, looking for a, a second girl. And she was down for that. So let's see if I can find it here. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just looking up. I've written so many of these things here. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's, here's my old one. I could read that one. All right, I'll, I'll read my old one first. But I really want to find, uh, let's see, I really want to find my my latest one, the one where we're seeking another girl, because I'm actually quite proud of that one. But here's my old one. Here's my first one. So so on, on the sugar sites is usually like two sections you have to fill out. One is about me, and then the other one is what I'm looking for. Okay, so there's those two sections. So my about me section, this is my first one, and most of this I wrote myself, but a couple things I kind of ripped off of some shit I found online. All right, when I was a little boy, I thought the definition of sex was to kiss while you were naked. So one night I got out of the bath and kissed my cat on his nose. Then I remembered I was naked and ran downstairs crying. I had sex with the cat. Should have seen my mom's face. So you probably want to know more about me now. Well, to be honest, I won't open doors for you. In fact, be careful as I will likely trip you as you walk through them. Oh, and I expect you to cook for me and clean up my mess after I eat. By the way, I'm a really messy eater. Food everywhere, on the table, all over my face, but these are the least of your worries. I leave my socks on the floor in the bedroom, and yes, they're dirty. I will not do laundry and insist that you do it. Not just insist. You must love to do my laundry and look forward to it. I think you get the picture. Also, I don't do romance. I expect action on the first date, big time action, and I won't sleep over. Yes, this will be at your place because I don't want you to know where I live. And where will our first date be? Well, we can go anywhere except Lavo because I'm banned for life after firing a plastic arrow into the owner's eye on Halloween while dressed as Cupid. In my defense, I was aiming for his girlfriend. Okay, ladies, that's it for now. 
I'm waiting for your emails. Go. And then that's the first section. The second section is very short, which is the what I'm looking for section. And I just and I got more serious here. I said, in all seriousness, I'm looking for a super sexy, super cool lady to accompany me on exotic vacations, a partner in crime. And if I find someone who's truly amazing, well, who knows what the future holds? So that's that was my that was one from like five years ago. But it's fun, you know, like it's a it's a fun, it's a fun little profile. Let's see if I I really want to find the other one here. Na, 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 na. I gather you had good response from that. Yeah, no, I had uh, had a very very good response. Let's see here, but uh, I had a great response. In fact, in fact, a lot of girls. I mean, probably I would get ten messages a say a day saying it was the best profile they'd seen on the site. Now that's not to say it's because it's such a great profile, but but it's because most of the guys on the sugar sites and just dating sites in general, they're just really lazy and they just kind of write, they don't put a lot of thought into it. You know, put, put thought into it really, you know, make it something that you kind of work on every day for 20 minutes and, you know, keep trying to improve it. Let's see, I'm trying to find here. I'm trying to find my, the, the one where we're searching for another girl. Uh, but I'm having some uh, technical difficulties here. Cat, uh, cat, and Julie. Let's see here if it's in my text. No, no. Ah, I can't find it. Oh well, I'll, I'll sort of keep looking. When, when, when you start talking, I'll, I'll, I'll search around for it. But what else? What else? What else? What else do you want to talk about, Cliff? Well, I guess uh, you know. It sounds like you've been spending your time focused on the um, uh, on the uh, the sugar site. So I guess I'm I'm more curious about uh, uh, you know how you deal with like a, you know from what I saw is these women uh, you know they they would always keep coming back to wanting to get paid and like uh, you know that was that was my uh, short experience with it and. Uh, you know, he, he seemed to, you know, not care about, he would do a lot of lying to them. So like that, it didn't really affect him. He, he just sort of like, you know, you know, I, I'm, like I said, he, he ended up getting, having to pay this one. I'm sure he's paid others, but, uh, you know, my, my experience was that they, they were all very, uh, you know, focused on, you know, maybe letting you think that they're not, interested in getting paid at some point that they're looking for something more, but it always came back to being paid. Well, like I said, the, the way to bypass that is, is you, what I would do anyway, is just when they bring it up, they def, you deflect and then you, you get you them on a video. So, you can only deflect it so many times if it keeps coming back all the time. Yeah. And, but with the step, the step that you're missing is that in between those deflections, what that all that means is that he did not do enough for poor building in between the deflections. If he actually got that girl in between deflecting to to start to like him, she'd drop it in a heartbeat. You have to get him to like you. That I mean, that is part of it. <laughs> you know, if you wanna if you wanna bang him for free, if you don't care and you got money and you're just like you know what, I'll pay this girl whatever three hundred bucks to to bang her. You know, fine, more power to you. But uh, personally, I like the I like the hunt. I like for me the part. Sex is great, but the part I really like the most is that moment where I'm like, ah, she's mine. She likes me now. Hmm. Okay. And uh, is there anything in particular that you do in general to get them to like you specifically? Hmm. I think I think it's like for me it's a combination of like two things right it's I'm a, I'm a playful person I've become more playful as I've gotten older I what I really do and I've I've gotten you know I've gotten pretty expert at it I would say is I I'm playful I'm very playful I'm very you know David D back in whatever you know, the early 2000s had the whole cocky, funny concept, which I'm sure a lot of your guys are familiar with. Um, funny is not as uh, funny was the wrong word, though. He made, he he made a mistake there. Not that David D was actually ever good with women. 
Um, but uh, f funny, funny is not the word because not everybody's funny, right? Not everybody can be funny. Not everybody's clever. But anybody can be playful. It's not that hard, you know. You just kind of just it's silly. It's playful. So what I would say is not being playful because I don't really care that much. And then mix. You can't just be playful. You have to mix in some kind of sexual energy into that, right? So it's like for me, it's like a balancing act of kind of going back and forth between playful and sexual. And when I say sexual, I mean kind of, you know, flirtatious, you know, like looking at her like, you know, like she's a yummy snack that I might devour, you know, not in a serial killer way, in like a sexual way. But, uh, you know, like going on a seesaw ride back and forth between, all right, I'm being playful, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed, I'm breathing, I'm being playful. Okay, now I'm going to look at her like I'm going to fuck her. Or now I'm going to reframe something, like a, a technique that I love to do. Um, this this was back in my first product, back in or second product, uh, two thousand eight or something. It was called uh, Supernatural, but one of the techniques was called Frame and Blame. So the idea with Frame and Blame is uh, you're looking for opportunities instead of flirting with her, which is what most guys do. They'll say like, "Oh, you got a nice ass, honey," right? That's what most guys will do. You know, "Oh, you look sexy in those pants, girl." Instead of that. You know, maybe you accidentally drop your fork or whatever, you know, on the floor and you kind of lean over, you kind of bend over to pick it up. And then you turn around, look at her and say, you're looking at my ass. Stop that. You know, something like that. In other words, you flirt with her by making it looking for opportunities to make it seem like she's actually flirting with you. So you still get the benefit of the flirt, but you also kind of get the, the playful uh, status boost that you know, you're, you're framing it like she's just into you. So that's a great way to kind of combine and, and ride that fence between playfulness and flirtation. And that's really, if like in person, forget about all the sugar shit, right? In person, that's really the essence of, of my quote unquote game, which is riding back and forth between kind of, you know, playful, silly, relaxed and flirtatious, making it seem like she's flirting with me, framing myself as the prize. And looking at her like I want to fuck her. Yeah, it's one of my old expressions. I, I used to say that, you know, accuse her of what you think she thinks you're thinking, basically. That's great. I love that. I, that's perfect. That, that's a, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. yeah. That's one of my old expressions, basically. Um, interesting. Um, so uh, I guess another thing that occurs to me to ask you about, I know that you're currently – living in the, uh, in the islands. And I was, uh, you know, my, my, uh, personal experience actually in, in some of these, uh, kind of exotic locales is that by being, uh, I guess, North American, either Canadian or American, uh, you know, you are a rock star over there and the women typically look at you, uh, like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're underwater and you're, you're fresh air, you know, it's like, uh, they're really, uh, I was really quite shocked at how, uh, how, uh, my own experience had been in, in some of the Caribbean islands where, um, uh, they kind of looked at me like, uh, like I was a gourmet meal and, uh, you know, I don't really experience that in up here in, uh, regular cities in North America. Yeah. I was wondering if that's some, something you've experienced where you are. Uh, definitely. I mean, you know, there's a lot of parts of the world where, you know, Americans or Canadians, you know, have a, a, a massive advantage where like, if you're like a, you know, if you're just like a normal American, you know, that, you know, everyone's American here, but like an American in Eastern Europe, for example, or South America or Central America, uh, you, you know, you'd be the equivalent of like, you know, a rich B-level celebrity, you know, in the States, in those other areas. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's another, talk about hacks. I mean, if we're talking about the sugar game as being sort of a, a, a hack, uh, certainly the best that I found, another big one is just where you decide to live, you know? I mean, not only, depending on what you do for a living and if you have family and all that, if it's something you can do, um, 
to say, <laughs> I'm just going to move to Albania, fuck it, or go stay in Albania for a while or, you know, anywhere in Europe, really. Um, there's a lot of places in the world where Americans just have a huge status boost um, or Canadians, no offense, Cliff. Canadians are cool too. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so no, for sure, that's a, a, a huge thing. Uh, for me personally, you know, I'm in, I'm in Puerto Rico right now. Puerto Rico, the reason I moved here is because, uh, you know, obviously I have a you know online business, and uh, Puerto Rico is the best tax haven in the world right now for American citizens. Like it's it's a fucking gangster tax haven. You basically don't have to pay taxes anymore, and um, so that's why I moved here. And I've definitely smashed quite a few Puerto Rican girls while I'm down here. Um, it's great. It's great, but I, personally, right now, I'm actually going through a little bit of like, I'm trying to not focus as much on girls just to see like, you know, what happens with my writing or what happens with, you know, sort of other arenas of my life. And this is like a personal challenge, man. I don't, I don't like addiction and, you know, sex and girls has always been without fail my, my, my biggest addiction. Um, so now you're sort of trying to, uh, avoid that a little bit from what I gather. Yeah. Temporarily, you know, like I, I just, I want to see if I can, you know, go, go Samson style with it and like not have any, any, uh, any girls. Well, not any girls. If it comes to me fine, but I'm not, you know, I'm not on the sugar sites currently. You know, I'm, um, I'm just kind of just working on myself for a little bit. And I think that's, it's a good thing to do from time to time. I've never done it. This is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> Are, are, yeah. is, is any of the, I guess, work on your personal development have anything to do with um, uh, your um, trying to improve your, I guess, relationships with women at all? Well, that's been, I mean, listen, I, I, you know, that's that's been a bit of a hole in, in my my game, I guess, which is, you know, my my game has in part had to get, I think, really strong because I've never had good relationship game, you know? Like I'm, I'm great at getting into relationships or at least, you know, one night stands, but, um, not, not at sustaining them in sort of a healthy long-term way. And I, I would be the last person to ever give advice, you know, for that. So don't ask me. I'll ruin lives. So your, your personal experience has been more, uh, short-term relationships than I gather. Oh yeah. For, I mean, I've had a few long-term relationships, but I've never like, considered marriage i've never i mean never for a second you know it's always i think i have some sort of I, I just i really just like variety you know i like sexual variety and the idea of being with the same person in a monogamous relationship for the rest of my life sounds sounds like fucking hell <laughs> okay um i mean you've heard the saying you know show me a, a beautiful woman and i'll show you a guy that's bored of fucking her like i've dated some exceptionally beautiful women and even the hottest ones, you know, still, I'm not gonna say I got bored of fucking them, but the hottest ones, I didn't get bored, but I still began to crave other women, including women that were less attractive than than my girlfriend. You know, it's just, you know, I, some I have a theory on it, and I don't have any science really to back this up, but I've I have this this uh, theory that you know, if you go back to our our, our origins and our caveman days, you know. The, the uh, rate of infant mortality was probably, you know, incredibly high. I mean, it was eight out of ten babies didn't make it to adulthood or something. So the the men who successfully passed on their genes to us fifty thousand years later, those are the men that put their their sperm into many different women, and those are our ancestors. Those are the ones who successfully passed on their genes. So that sort of desire for sexual variety is some kind of you know, evolutionary trait that's been implanted in us. That's how I justify my womanizing, Cliff. Okay. <laughs> uh, where do you think you're 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 headed, though? Do you think you're going to end up in a relationship at some point, or is it going to be another relationship with a couple of women, or uh, or is it always just going to be something open? Uh, I already my next relationship will be with two women, and it'll be with two women. That are not only in love with each other and me, but uh, but are are open to bringing home another girl to play with sometimes. And and if I ever do, quote unquote, settle down or have kids or anything like that, 
it'll probably be in a situation that you know is along those lines do you uh, do you feel that you're able to create that situation outside of the something like the sugar sites um you know i'm not i'm not saying i couldn't do it it's just that like my lifestyle nowadays like you know i'm i'm fucking 40 man like i'm not like into the whole nightclub scene anymore. I'm not really into strip clubs. Like I'm, I'm kind of a homebody. You know, I like to write. I like to work. Um, you know, I like to meditate. Uh, I'm just not into. I went through all that in my 20s and 30s with the party scenes and the strip clubs and and my lifestyle these days. Just on, you know, meeting girls online is is just much more conducive to my current lifestyle and. Um, yeah, so for me, and Tinder, you know, is okay, but it, Tinder's a joke compared to the sugar site, just in terms of like the how attractive the girls are, how how many girls come after you. Um, so I, to me, it's still the best mechanism that I've found are these sugar sites. Now, I, I have heard that from you know other guys as well. It's just that uh, uh, I, I guess there's a differing different varieties of, uh, of approaches to it. Uh, I think a lot of them, a lot of the guys just sort of become resigned to the fact that, uh, you know, they haven't figured out this way around the, uh, the payment, uh, elements of it. Uh, whereas, uh, obviously you and Bill Grant have, uh, have had more success with that. Um, uh, I, as I told you, they, yeah, these guys, some- these guys that are your friends that are using it, they should get Bill's product. They should get Bill's product and try that out because I, I think not only will they have more success and pay less money, but they'll have less sort of damage control or pissed off girls. Um, you know, uh, let's yeah, that's see. pretty key. <laughs> yeah. Like, so exactly. There's a way to do it. Like, I, you know, I mean, I, we put a lot of time into it and, and by the way, you know, Bill, kind of cracking the code on that and me putting all the time into it, it really, it wasn't ever to make a product on it. It, it really was just out of a desire to find the easiest, fastest, most efficient way to sleep with the hottest girls. That was it. No, I, I totally, uh, totally can understand. I mean, uh, the sugar sites aren't really that cheap and t- next to uh, sort of uh, some of the other sites. But meanwhile, uh, you know, they definitely have the women on there. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I guess, like I said, the experience that I saw was that uh, they were all, att- they were all there for the money. That was why they were attracted to that site. They were, uh, and, you know, a lot of them, when you try to talk to them about, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, anything sort of, approaching a regular relationship they say you're on the wrong site (laughs) Mm, yeah hey by the way Cliff, i did just find finally i did just find the profile that uh cat and i had on the uh the one of the sugar sites here can i read it go ahead all right so remember there's two sections there's the about me section and then there's the what i'm looking for section all right so the about me section about me about us is more like it Kat and I have been dating for over a year, so we finally took the plunge and moved in together. We're both super health conscious, love water sports, traveling to exotic destinations, fine dining, and cuddling up to movies. Sometimes when we watch scary flicks, I switch to a weird monster voice. Kat hates that, but life is good. Great, actually. There's just one thing missing. You. Just kidding. Statistically speaking, it's probably not you. We're pretty picky, but who knows? Maybe, just maybe, you're the one we've been looking for. And then the what I'm the what I'm looking for section here. Okay, now to the fun stuff. We're looking for a genuine partner in crime, an equal, someone who's interested in a three-way relationship. Needless to say, you should be into girls as much as you're into guys, if not more. Also, you should be into gingers. Wait, not into gingers. You should worship gingers. I'm a ginger, by the way. Okay. What else? We're looking for someone as cool as she is hot. An adventurer, ambitious, beautiful, bright, low drama. Oh, and if you're interested in entrepreneurship or building passive income streams, then you've come to the right place. 
I may look super young, but I'm not. I just exfoliate. Point is, don't sleep on this, Ginger. I've built million-dollar companies from scratch, and if you're motivated, I'll show you how to do it too. It's easier than you think. Plus, screw day jobs. Now let's get a bit more serious for a sec. The truth is, there's a whole spectrum of women on this site. On one hand, there are women who are looking for a real connection with a partner who has his shit together. Women who want to better themselves, acquire invaluable knowledge, and have amazing experiences. Well, on the other hand, there are girls who just want to make a quick buck and trade their time for money. No matter which group you fall into, no judgment here. You got to do what you got to do. With that said, Kat and I are definitely looking for someone in the first category. Still reading? Good. You're smart. Hit us up. Tell us something. Uh, tell us about yourself. Something interesting. Personal, even. For example, why does a three-way relationship intrigue you? If we dig your answer and your picks, duh, then we'll send you our number and set up a quick video chat call. Video chat is a must, by the way, so don't be shy. It's the best way to avoid the freaks. If we vibe on the call, we'll fly you down to paradise. Probably best to start off as friends and see where things go from there. In other words, no pressure. We're pretty chill. Now start writing. Cat and Julian. Very sweet. <laughs> you like that, Cliff? Very nice, yeah. How was the yeah. response to it? Oh, it was great. It was great. It was a great response. I mean, in the end, you know, uh, in the end, I got to start from scratch. I had to boot Cat out of here. <laughs> but, you know, uh, no, it was, it was great. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the sugar sites in general, but um, – so you, just like, you've yeah. never you've never encountered a, a real problem with the, with them because of the techniques you've been using. Once I did because I I violated Bill's rules. Once I I did have this is out of literally hundreds of, of women that I've met from that site over the years. But um, but one time there was one time I I made a mistake and I wasn't as transparent as I should have been. There was a little bit of I the, I was unclear about what my expectations were she had asked for something for compensation I basically instead of you know I basically gave her like a maybe which was a mistake because the next morning when we woke up <laughs> she was she was pissed Woo. Yeah, okay I I can relate to that one <laughs> yeah yeah, no, it, it did happen once, but but it could have easily, it could have been avoided so easily if I had just been just been clear and said no, that's just not something I'm willing to do. You know, you can leave if you if you really feel that strongly about it, and then she wouldn't have been pissed, and she probably wouldn't even have left. Is the truth, you know? But um, maybe, you never know. Okay, so if, if I understand correctly, you've you've kind of reduced your uh, your meeting women activities to uh, to the sugar sites at this point in time uh, well at this point in time right now i'm not even on the sugar sites like i said i'm just kind of you know jerking off a lot but um well that's not true a very fat girl did come over the other day well what's the uh, what's the reason for this uh, uh sabbatical uh you know it's like it's just that I've just I've done it so many times, you know. Like you know what it is, and I don't want to. I hope not. I hope I don't discourage any of your listeners by by saying this. But like, you know, when I was eighteen and I got laid, it was fucking awesome, you know. And when I was thirty, it was awesome. But now, you know, I still get pleasure from it. Don't get me wrong. And the hotter she is, like the more joy I get. And if it's two girls, then I'm like fucking really happy. But in general, I, I found, you know, I've done this so many times that I, I just, I'm just not drawing as much joy from it as I used to. That's the truth. And so I'm like, you know what, let me just, because I'm not drawing as much joy from it, let me focus on some other things at this stage of my life that I, I do draw a lot of joy from, such as writing. Uh, you know, or, or creating something or, um, you know, I mean, that's really what it is. I'm just not, uh, I don't want to say I'm disenchanted with it. I've just, I've just done it so many times and I, I kind of want to see 
if I channel 50% of the energy that I've put into sleeping with women, you know, into something quote unquote more productive, more like writing a book, for example, or starting a new company or whatever it is, you know, meditating every day for an hour. Um, I want to see what I'm capable of in, in other areas. I think I've, I've diverted a lot of, of, of energy from kind of other things I wanted to pursue uh, and focused on women. So I'm, I'm just curious, you know, what, what else am I capable of besides banging a lot of chicks? So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm picturing you in Puerto Rico in uh, a fairly, you know, nice area of Puerto Rico where uh, I'm sure there's uh, restaurants and uh, uh, things, places to see and places to go. And, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if it's, you're just spending your time with friends there or you're mostly alone. I, I don't really know, you know, your day to day experience, but I would think that, you know, sooner or later you want to have some company and um it seems like you know in in puerto rico you'd be like i said you'd probably be a rock star uh, just because you're american and um a lot of the local island girls are just uh yeah. looking up to you just because well, of that no no it's true i mean i to be honest i i uh i i got on tin when when i broke off broke things off with cat which was a few months ago i just kind of got on tinder and Pretty fast, I had a nice rotation of four or five, you know, probably 19 or 20 year old uh, Puerto Rican girls. They were all very cute and just kind of rotating them and, and doing that. And, and it was cool. And uh, and then I got chlamydia. <laughs> ah, <laughs> it comes out now. <laughs> and then I got chlamydia and think I probably gave it to all of them. And I, of course, did the right thing and, and I told them about it but you know i kind of like after that i'm like ah, damn chlamydia again this is like the fucking 22nd time i've had chlamydia in my life and um and so i don't know I, for some for some reason i'm i'm just i'm chilling but yes you're right if if you come to a place like puerto rico or you or wherever or anywhere in eastern europe or even a lot of sort of mainland europe yeah you have you have an innate advantage especially because i do live in a nice area and i have a nice apartment here and um and i'm fucking american i'm actually half puerto rican i'm a i'm a puerto rican jew in case you didn't know i'm a jew to rican that's my <laughs> that's my skype handle oh i hope all your listeners don't start adding me on skype no add me guys add me add me i don't care just add me but uh yeah that's my so uh puerto rican jew jew to rican and uh but i'm still i'm white i'm caucasian i'm a fucking ginger and uh you know I definitely have a an advantage because of that down here for sure. Very interesting. <laughs> so, what else are we talk about, Cliff? You got anything else for me? What? Because I'm, uh, you know, I can talk about I can talk about anything. Well, I guess uh, let's uh, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, you know, other than uh, going on a uh, 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 you know a sugar site, uh, what what suggestions do you have for guys who are maybe just starting out and don't know, you know, which way to go when it comes to learning how to have some success with women for the first time. Um, well, you know, from my coaching days, you know, I, I definitely noticed that yeah, different guys have different issues. They have different, as they, as the, as they call it, uh, sticking points or, or, or affectations even like, you know, I, this is a strange example, but uh, I remember, I think it was the first workshop I ever taught. It was at the New York City Lair. There was one guy in, in, the, in the room, and he was in every pickup seminar, okay? He, I mean, he was in every class that they had at the New York City Lair. And the guy was, first off, not a bad-looking dude. You know, he was probably six feet tall, good-looking face, and he was jacked. Like, he had like a a model-esque body, but like a muscular, like, you know, fit model type. Like he was ripped. So you'd think, well, why is this guy in all these classes? Well, the day he took my class is the day I figured it out, which is my man stank. He has some terrible BO. Like he just had this nasty scent about him. And I realized that he's taking all these damn pickup workshops. And he's doing all this stuff. 
Nobody ever told him that he stinks. That's the problem. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's the problem. So my point just is, and I told him, it's very awkward, but um, my point just is, is that, you know, people have individual, individual people have individual issues, and usually they're not aware of what the issue is. They might be aware of the symptoms of the issue, but they're not always aware of what the real issue is. So the best thing is to actually, you know, I hate to say this, to, is to hire a great coach who will help pinpoint maybe what that their individual issue is. So Because that guy spent years studying pickup. He didn't need to. He just needed deodorant. See? So I found that that's, that is the case sometimes where it's sort of this issue that it's not really what they think. Um, in general, the guys I've worked with, it's usually uh, – it's usually one of two things, and one of them is more serious than the other. Uh, the first thing that's less serious and is more common is just kind of a variation of shyness. It's just sort of uh, they experience too much anxiety around women, and that anxiety uh, prevents them from kind of showing their how cool they actually are, or showing their their inner beauty, for lack of a better term, right? So. In those, that's a very common scenario. So when I had clients like that, you know, we'd actually focus on a lot of simple things like relaxation. Like even when I'm on a date, you know, um, not so much nowadays, but but you know, let's say up and up even through my mid 30s, you know, there'd be moments on a date where I a first date where I'd feel a little nervous tension, and I'd so what I would just do is. You know, if I'm sitting at the dinner table or at the bar, I'd kind of press on my lower abdominals. I'd try to release my abdominals, get the diaphragm to really drop on the inhalation, and just remind my body to breathe and use sort of uh, basic relaxation techniques to kind of drop me back into the moment. Because what happens is when 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 anxiety kicks in, the first thing that your attention when you're on a date. Your attention should, the focal point of your attention should be on her. You're listening to her. You're engaging with her. You're, you're in the moment. There's that feedback loop that you're a part of. When anxiety kicks in, it blocks you. You fall out of the feedback loop. You stop listening. Uh, you, you start imagining what you look like. In other words, the, the, the focal point of your attention goes back onto you, and that's death, right? So... A lot of what I would kind of advise guys that feel like they just have shyness or anxiety problems is, is to, it sounds you know, almost, you know, it sounds elementary, it sounds simplistic even, but just try to breathe, breathe and notice, all right, oh, I'm feeling nervous, My, I'm thinking about what she's thinking about me, how, how I look to her, I'm just going to gently shift the spotlight of my attention back onto her as I breathe. My breath is going to bring that spotlight back onto her and now I'm back in the moment. Now I'm back in that feedback loop again. So that's 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 one technique and it's really more of a of a practice, an ongoing practice that you'll you'll kind of do forever, right? Because everybody stops listening. Everybody falls out of the loop no matter how good you get at it. But you can practice and get better and better to stay engaged, to stay in the moment with her, right? The other major, somewhat major type of problem, and it's one of the reasons that a lot of guys are attracted to seduction, uh, is it's a more serious problem. To be quite frank, I have not had a, a great deal of success uh, with fixing this kind of issue. It's, it's more problematic, and, and that is when a, uh, when a guy has an awareness problem. So the first problem we talked about is an anxiety problem. That's something that's very common that can be very dramatically improved. The second problem is more severe, which is it's an awareness problem where a guy just isn't aware of how his behavior affects other people, right? So he says something or does something uh, because he thinks it's going to have X effect, but it actually has Y effect. Or... A, a variation off this awareness problem is it's more of an interpretation problem. So I remember, and this is just a random example, it's a dude I knew who came to me for coaching, but we were 
we were having dinner at a sushi restaurant once and the waitress came out and she, you know, showed us the menu and he ordered a couple of different sushi rolls and we were actually in a foreign country or something. We we're in South America and he, uh, and then a minute later, she hadn't, the waitress hadn't even left the table cliff. Okay. She, she remembered that one of the rolls that he had just ordered 30 seconds earlier was out of stock. Okay. And she apologized. She was very nice about it in her broken English. She apologized. She said, oh, we don't know the name of this role. We don't have this role. I'm so sorry. And I just, of course, you know, I was a waiter when I was younger. So, like, of course, I'm like, oh, cool, no problem. But his face just darkened. His face darkened like a black cloud went over him. And he, and he got angry with her. And he's like, you know, he, 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 here's what he said. He said, I... I just I feel like you're just taking advantage of us because we're foreigners, you know. This is some bullshit. Like he interpreted the fact that they were she just remembered we were out of this fucking role as like that she was taking advantage of us because we were foreigners. So something in his past or some chain of events had you know had, had warped his ability to to interpret information in 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 a normal way. And I've had clients like that. And clients like that, it's much harder to fix. It is doable. You have to create like a series of exercises, custom exercises that they kind of go through, hoops they jump through before they react to things. Um, but those are sort of the two major kind of buckets that I've, I've seen clients fall into. Okay. And um, so you're, you're not, uh, I guess, doing the coaching anymore these days from what I gather. I mean, if somebody pays me enough money, but that shit is going to be expensive. <laughs> That's it. But you know, uh, uh, I, I, yeah, we, we don't. I don't really do it so much these days. I have a lot of kind of other interests. Um, obviously, you know, if in a unique situation where it's someone that you know really does need help, but is also sort of malleable and pliable and and open minded to trying things, and they they down to kick in that loot, anything's negotiable. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, any other thoughts that you have about, or strategies and ideas about it, how, uh, guys can have some success with women that maybe we haven't talked, talked about tonight. Hmm. Strategies. How to have success with women. You know, this, I I'll give you something. And this is something that I never really taught in my workshops or with clients. This is more of a recent revelation, Cliff, but, and the reason I never taught it is because I didn't understand it at that point, you know, in my life. And the reason I didn't understand it is because I was, my whole goal was to fuck mo bitches. You know what I'm saying? Like it was to bang a lot of hot chicks and just get laid as much as I could and sleep with the hottest women and have threesomes and, and do all this crazy stuff. That was my focus. Now at this stage, you know, in my life, my focus really is on personal development, like on developing myself spiritually, uh, physically, uh, health wise, um, in terms of my, my education, you know, learning, uh, as a writer, as an entrepreneur and growing businesses, like my, my focus is really on me now, um, and on my own development. And I think, one of the discoveries from that is if you have sort of a vision of yourself, of improving yourself, of bettering yourself, and you have uh, ambitious goals in multiple areas of your life, you know, that's attractive. That's attractive. People can sense that. Not just women, but, you know, dudes want to be your friend. You know, guys want to be around you. Girls want to be around you. It's, it's an attractive thing. So, you know, when in doubt, work on yourself. Work on yourself and better yourself in all, all sorts of ways. And, I, and this, is, this is related to that. And again, it's going to sound almost obvious and, and perhaps some, even simplistic. But meditation is an incredible tool, not just for seduction, but really for anything. Because what meditate the practice of meditation, and I feel like one of those hippie freaks right now preaching about fucking, you know, Woodstock hippie shit. But uh, I'm just going to say it. Meditation, it grounds you. What, what meditation does is 
it is the practice of kind of focusing on the breath, right? And tuning out all of the so-called white noise that's constantly fluttering in your brain, right? And it's a practice where you get better and better at tuning out the distractions, you know, not thinking about your laundry list or, you know, how your, you know, uh, mother is not well or whatever things are going through your mind and just bringing yourself in the moment on the breath more and more present, more and more present. It's the, it's the practice of becoming more present. And that practice is an incredible advantage when it comes to being with a woman because you're more present and you're listening better, you're more engaged. And whenever you find your anxiety spiking up, well, you just reconnect with that breath. You come back into the moment. You come back into that present moment. And, and now you're right there. You're right there with her. The anxiety melts away because, because you're breathing and you're present. And for me, I would say if you're looking for something like a supplementary skill that will help you with women and every other facet of your life, uh, I highly recommend meditation. Um, there's a wonderful app on, on the App Store. It's called Insight Timer. It's free. And there's thousands of uploaded meditations. Some are guided. You know, some, some are about confidence. Uh, you know, some are about uh, being in the moment. Some are about going to sleep. You know, that's, you name the theme, they got it. And they've got timers and they've got all these cool, you know, just different types of meditation for five minutes, one minute, 30 minutes, however long you can do it for. And what's cool about it is it's kind of like Amazon where all of these uploaded meditations from these thousands of teachers uh, get rated by thousands of users. So you can quickly navigate through like the very best of the best uh, meditations. I'm a huge fan of it. It's become a, an integral part of, of my life at this point. So I, I, if you're looking for a supplementary skill that will help you with women, hands down, meditation. What else are you doing, I guess, in terms of your own self-improvement at the moment? Like what are you kind of focused on other than meditation? Well, I can tell you what I'm – that's a fucking – fuck. It's not really about seduction, but – in a way it is, um, I'm seducing myself. Um, so I'll just tell you what I, what I, I'm just going to, I'll share this with you, Cliff. I, I, I'm, I'm really kind of diverting away from, from women here, but I think it's, it's valuable, which is I'm, I'm actually working on a book and I'll sort of tell you what the general idea for the book is. The general idea is, um, well, I'll put it like this. I am an incredibly undisciplined person. I'd even go as far as to say that I'm lazy and I've always been extremely lazy, extremely undisciplined. I've never had willpower. Um, you know, I think about uh, Vin DiCarlo, you know, we were, we were very close friends and business partners for, for many years. And, um, you know, I mean, Vin DiCarlo has built, you know, probably seven or eight multi-million dollar businesses, you know, over the last 10 years. I mean, it's really incredible what he's done as, as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, he branched, he started with dating, he moved from dating and seduction into supplements and into merchant accounts and into networks and to all this stuff. It's really quite incredible. Well, you know, he and I worked side by side for years, but the difference between us, there was a few differences. I was cuter, but the other differences <laughs> is, uh, uh, were that, was that he was incredibly disciplined, just naturally disciplined. I just wasn't. And so, so one of the, my thesis for the book or one of the theses in the book is that is that discipline, you know, in our culture, people talk about, um, they talk about, you know, you've, we've all heard it said, you know, 90% perspiration, 10% inspiration. In other words, there's this sort of belief that like talent is important, but it's not as important as hard work and discipline. Would you agree with that, Cliff? That's sort of a culturally kind of uh, cultural belief. That we I, have. Would that's, I would say that you, you hear that a lot for sure. You hear, you hear that a lot. It's, it's, that's exactly what I'm saying. You hear that a lot. My, I, I, I'm going to contend with that and, and disagree and say, no, that's fucking bullshit. Discipline itself is a talent. Discipline is a talent. And some people have it and some people don't. I know this because I've never had it. And trust me, I have tried it all to get more disciplined over the years. My father's a fucking psychologist for one thing. And I learned a shitload of techniques from him. 
beyond that, I've read every self-help guru you can imagine. Brian Tracy, Les Brown, Tony Robbins, uh, James Clear. He was, I mean, I've had a half a dozen life coaches. I've had half a dozen productivity coaches. I have still failed. I've, I've had moments of inspiration, moments of productivity, phases of productivity, but I've always fallen off the wagon, you know, one step forward, two steps back. So I have finally, <laughs> you know, it took me half my life to figure it out, but I finally, out of all the techniques I've ever tried to sort of gain more mastery over myself and get closer to reaching whatever my true potential is as a man, I have finally found something that fucking works, Cliff. Okay. What was that, obviously? I was, wa I was waiting for you to ask. Um, <laughs> so uh, wh what it is is, well, I'll just tell you. I'll tell you right now. I have a contract. Oh, why, don't I, why don't I read it to you? I have a contract, and this is what I do every day now because I have no discipline. So one day, let's see. Bear with me here. I'm pulling up the, uh, ah, is this it? So then optimized. Let's see, contract. Basically, I've attached my life to uh, contracts. So I have this contract I'm under. I've, I've been doing these contracts for 10 years off and on. Um, the one I'm doing right now is called the Master of Life Mini Contract. And it says, I, Julian, do hereby agree to the following terms on February 25th, 2019. Now, that date will make more sense in a moment. Uh, goal, hygiene. I have to wash face and brush my teeth every morning. Uh, proof is on the honor system. Goal, spiritual, meditate for at least 10 minutes by uh, every morning. Um, the proof, send meditation app screenshot by 12 p.m. to Jana and Dad. Goal, educational, read for at least 30 minutes every morning. This is before 12 noon, right? Uh, no interruptions. Proof, honor system, state what I read, show page count and daily text to dad. Goal, creative, at least 300 words written every morning. Uh, proof, add copy into my shared document. Uh, goal, health, no cheat meals or snacks. Maximum four meals and a smoothie or three meals, and these are like meal preps, and two smoothies. Proof, honor system. Penalties, if I fail to prove or complete any of the above goals, Jana, Jana is my, my bookkeeper, Jana will wire $250 to AIBRT, that's my dad's nonprofit, for each missed goal. So if I miss all of those goals in a day, she'll wire $1,500 to, to my dad. And then here's the, here's the magic of this contract, auto renew clause. Although this is only a one-day contract, remember I said February 25th, beginning, if I do not notify Jana and dad, by 11.59 p.m. about a change to the contract for the following day, then said contract will auto-renew for another day and will do so continuously until I modify or cancel. So I've been running this particular contract for the last three weeks, and that's what I've done is I've attached my life to these accountability contracts, these extremely in-depth accountability contracts where, uh, you know, there's a, that, that's what the book is about, really. It's about how to kind of attach your life to these contracts. It's, it's a way for undisciplined, naturally undisciplined people to achieve uh, their real potential in life. So, I mean, every day now, I meditate every morning. I read every morning for 30 to 60 minutes. I write 300 to 600 words every morning. Uh, I, I have my coffee every morning. Um, you know, I make my bed every morning. These are things that I, I cannot do without some kind of consequences in place. I need to have that. I need to build structure because the thing is, Cliff, the real – the goals in life, if you're in the army, right, well, you could say the army builds discipline. But I disagree a little bit because well, – I don't know. I've never been in the fucking army. They wouldn't accept me. But, you know, it, it, I disagree because if you – if they blow that trumpet in the morning for roll call and you don't get the fuck up – they're going to beat the shit out of you and throw you in the brig, right? There's consequences in place. But if you want to, say, reach nirvana through meditation or get your six-pack back, you know, get ripped, well, there's nobody sitting there with a gun to your head saying you got to do this. Those are the important – those are what Stephen Covey calls the important goals. Those are like the long-term goals that don't have any built-in urgency associated with them. Those are the great goals in life. So – what, I have, what I'm experimenting very heavily with right now is 
creating structure and consequences and rewards on important long-term goals that typically don't have that structure. So a lot of this kind of work I'm doing on myself right now, this is sort of the foundation for it. Interesting. Very interesting. And it, it sounds like it's it's sticking with you though, from what I'm gathering. It's it's not uh, it, it, you are sticking to these uh, these uh, tasks, I guess that uh, you want to see some discipline out of your in your life from, and uh, it sounds like you are following at them. Oh, absolutely, and and I've experiment. I've failed with contracts. I mean, listen, you know, ten years ago, the first contract I ever did that I remember anyway was it was when I was writing Stripper Shark. Uh, the the sales video for Stripper Shark, great product by the way, and um, I'm writing the video for it, and I had a I had a, this is gonna sound so gay, but so I had like an intern copywriter at the time, real gawky looking kid, you know, cross eyed, like six four, crazy afro, just like weird looking dude. Not that that should even be relevant to what I'm about to say, but my first contract was if I didn't finish writing Stripper Shark by December 31st of whatever, 2010, um, <laughs> that, that I, I signed a contract. I had witnesses, okay? I had to, quote, gargle John. John was my copywriter. I had to gargle John's balls <laughs> for 15 seconds. And the next one, the next contract I had after that was I had a, I had a, uh, a little uh, Daisy BB gun. But it was, a, you know, it was a real BB gun. You know, you don't want to get shot with it. Where if I didn't finish whatever task it was, some other project by X date, uh, I would have to be shot in the stomach point blank with the BB gun. Somebody was going to shoot me with the BB gun. So my point is, over the years, my, my, I mean, the, by the way, I never sucked John's balls or got <laughs> shot. I got the <laughs> shit. <laughs> from but the amount of stress I went through, like in the days, like before the deadline, was insane. It was not fucking worth it. So over the years, I've gotten better and better with more experimentation at sort of beginning to perfect these kinds of contracts. Um, and and that's, yeah, that's that's really what I'm doing now. And I'm trying to cut the girls out to some degree while I kind of focus on me. Interesting. So it, it sounds like a little bit of a temporary uh, diversion, though. Uh, that you'd eventually, you'll probably get back to... Uh, to uh, having interest in women. Uh, well, I still have an interest in women. But I'm not uh, not gay, but um, <laughs> but uh, no, I still have an interest in women. It's it's more just an exercise in, in in you know focusing on me. However, in terms of my master plan for life, my master plan for life is uh, you know spend a good portion of this year, you know at least the next you know say six months. Um, Spend as much as I can this year to like really, uh, you know, building, uh, you know, my my businesses and, you know, creating you know, more financial security and you know, accumulating, uh, you know, a certain amount of, of cash in the bank. And when I've achieved some of those goals, you know, I'm going to, um, I'm going when I've when I've achieved some of those goals, I'm going to. You know, then then I'll refocus on on girls. I'll refocus on girls, and I I already know like my end vision is living on a penthouse on the beach, you know, uh, somewhere tropical, kind of like where I do now. And uh, I mean, I live on the beach now, but um, but with two fucking stunningly hot women, and I've got them both pregnant at the same time, and uh, and that's roll off into the sunset. Okay. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. Well, you know, maybe uh, maybe you can tell uh, the people listening to this, um, you know, if they want to find out more about, uh, uh, I guess, uh, whatever you have to offer them in terms of uh, products or, uh, or anything else, uh, maybe you can take a few minutes now and just uh, tell people, you know, how to follow up on, on everything that they've heard from you. Well, uh, if you've got a fuckload of money to spend and you want to hire me for some personal coaching, you just hit up, uh, hit up Cliff and I'm sure he can uh, put us in touch. And, uh, you know, I do have several products. Hopefully Cliff will uh, uh, post some links somewhere. 
uh, forum. But um, I think off the top of my head, if you're interested in, in uh, strippers, I got a great product that just basically shows you how to bang strippers for free. Um, I, I spent three years exclusively dating strippers because one of the big secrets I discovered about strippers is strippers are very uh, competitive with each other, extremely competitive with each other. So if you have a technique to where you can go into a strip club and start hooking up with having sex with or dating one of the strippers, well, then you start to go to that club. You're not a customer anymore. You know, you're like one of the boyfriends. And the, because the strippers are sort of innately competitive with each other, basically, once you bang one, you can bang them all. It's, rich, it's like a domino effect with strippers. It's really amazing how you can kind of date one and go to the other and go to another and then go to the other and how the strippers migrate from clubs to club. Uh, so I have a great product there. That's uh, strippershark.com. Um, still to this day, it's one of my favorite products I've ever produced. Uh, I'll plug Bill Grant's product here because we talk so much uh, about uh, about his product. That's the Sugar Game product. That's uh, called Ageless, and I th you can go to sleepwithyoungerwomen.com, sleepwithyoungerwomen.com, and uh, I've got what the hell's the domain for Supernatural? I've got one more, which is like my main product. It's uh, let's see, uh, uh, I, I think it's. I think it's fuck a new girl tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fuck a new girl tonight. Uh, dot com. <laughs> Sorry, uh, pretty pretty lewd there. But yeah, so basically, strippershark.com, sleepwithyoungerwomen.com, and fuck a new girl tonight.com. Those are all products I, I either own or I'm involved with in, in some capacity. Well, uh, very interesting, and uh, I will just remind uh, those listening to uh, this. Uh, interview that if you uh, basically follow up on anything with Julian and uh, buy something from him, if you uh, let me know that you uh, did that or send us an email, uh, I'll send you a, an addition of free Cliff's List bonus product as a thank you for having followed up and bought something that you heard about through Cliff's List. So uh, appreciate that. Uh, I think, Julian, you've uh, shared some very interesting uh, stuff with us tonight. Uh, I, I I uh, really appreciate the time that you've taken with me. And, um, you know, I think uh, we're definitely going to have to do this again sometime soon. Yeah, it was fun, man. I enjoyed it. So uh, I'm going to, uh, I guess, kind of sign off here, but uh, definitely we got to talk again shortly. Awesome, Cliff. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Take care.